everybody. Um, cool, let's get into it. The title of my speech is The Next Generation. You have 80,000 hours in your career. That's 40 hours per week for 50 weeks per year for 40 years. Hopefully you don't have to work for that long, but clearly there are more people in the workforce than there are in the education system. You know, the, pers the passions that we pursue outside of work, the, everything that we do subconsciously, whether or not we like it or not, contribute to our performance at work and our ability to train and help people. In the education system, at least, you know, back in the day, in the science, technology, maths, you know, where information is pushed to us, into our brain, we're like sponges trying to absorb information just to regurgitate it back in tests and exams to prove to the teacher that we understood the concept and for what, a brownie point, a star? Anyway, so, so you know, the education system, you know, there, there's, there's certain things that we might want to change. In the industry, there's certain things that we might want to change. Hi, everyone. My name's Depesh, and I'm here to talk to you about project-based learning and industry-based learning. There are a number of things out there that, um, you know, with project-based learning. What, what that means to me is uh, rapid, low-cost learning. Let me take you on a journey on what that means to me and also um, you know, uh, how we do this at Datacom. So one thing that I'm here to tell you right, is that the edu uh, ed work life is not like education. And I know that's probably going to blow your mind, but you didn't expect to hear that when you came to Tech Talk, right? <laughs> I know, right? It's just interesting stuff. <laughs> but um, I think the thing that I get out of this, right, is over the last 12 months, I've worked with over 20 different interns, and some of them are in the crowd. Um, the, the thing that I have thought about the most is why do people do internships? Why do people do work experience? And I think the... The key thing was, you know, obviously there's various reasons. Some people want to get a job. Some people want to make relations. They want to meet new people, um, get a reference, that sort of stuff, right? And, you know, there's probably people here who want to do the same thing and, you know, come have a chat after. <laughs> but essentially, um, you know, with, with this type of learning, there's a number of sort of um, uh, things that people can, can get out of it. Um, I think that with, with students, especially, you know, people that have not been industry, in the industry for a very long time, um, they, they realize that, um, I guess, when, when they get into the workforce, at least when I got there, you know, collaboration is not called cheating. And in... in like the university, you know, we, we go ask someone for help and they're like, uh, sorry, I can't help you with that. Versus, you know, all the projects that we do at uni, um, sometimes it can feel that way. Or, you know, I go ask someone and they're like, oh, sorry, no, man, you're going to get caught on Turnitin. I, I don't know how it works, but it's like, beep, 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 beep. Yeah, anyways. Um, but I think uh, going on to like the next sort of step, there's a term that I've sort of coined called uh, relaunches. And what relaunches mean to me are, you know, people that have been in the industry for either, um, or outside, out of the industry for, you know, three months to, you know, 25 years. I've had an intern who was in the tech industry. She um, w went to horse racing, got injured, and then she came back into tech. And I think, you know, if there's people like this, we need to give them all the opportunities that we possibly can to enable them and, you know, really get them you know, up to speed. And, but for what, right? To reduce the skill shortage gap um, that we're, we're facing in tech. And I think, um, you know, the, the main thing um, here is that there are a number of people um, uh, trying to become relaunchers. They go through programs like Mission Ready, AWS Restart, and Rather than having to um, spend six months trying to, uh, rather than having to spend you know two years trying to learn something that they don't necessarily care about, they can finish these programs within six months, find out that they don't enjoy 
you know, whatever it is that they're trying to do and then move on from there. Um, like I said, um, there are a number of people, um, you know, that I've worked with over the last 20 years as interns. And um, I think the thing that I want them to get out of it is that they're working on a project that is good for their portfolio, good for um, what they do moving on, whether or not it's with Datacom or not. Um, so we want to create like a, a series of experiments and projects that are meaningful for them. And so what we did was, you know, obviously we've all been through the pandemic that uh, we <laughs> heard about. Um, and one of the stats that came out of it was 43% of leaders say that relationship building is the greatest challenge when doing remote or hybrid work. And so, you know, we've literally been look, looking at each other through Teams calls just like this, right? And, you know, we've all had that comment where like, oh my God, you're way taller than I thought you were when, uh, <laughs> when you met them, right? And so I think what we got out of this is that there's a lot of loneliness and disconnect with people when they're away from each other. And so how do we really get people, you know, having those water cooler moments or those social collisions um, in that remote and hybrid world. And so we came up with a series of virtual world experiments and we've called it social connectedness where, you know, Danby, one of our interns who created these uh, amazing virtual worlds where people um, can come in, they can interact with each other, um, have those social collisions, you know, have that spatial audio that you would get in the real world, but in this virtual world. So that was just one of these experiments. The next experiment that we looked into um, uh, where Wafik and Sophia and Kafo and some of my interns looked at was trying to make people feel more connected with their workplace, trying to make them um, really, like we've got a lot, had a lot of new starters. How do you make them uh, find out about the workplace and make them you know, understand the heritage of where they are? And then lastly, you know, Siri here in the room and uh, a number of people, Corey, I could, the list goes on. They've been working on a project, you know, after post-COVID, you know, hopefully this pandemic has ended, it's an endemic now. Um, we are, we're essentially looking at people's well-being and their mental state and making them feel um, like more self-aware of their well-being. Because it's one thing to feel, um, oh, Sometimes people don't even know that they're stressed. And so how do we you know, solve those problems? So I'm just one person, right? I'm standing here um, maybe because of selection bias or whatever. Um, but everyone's journey and the, the way that they get through life is different. My journey is different to yours. And so it's all those trials and tribulations that make you who you are. So if I can leave you this, try things. Don't be afraid of failure and see what works for you. You know, some of the, the greatest interns that I've had through, you know, or people who have done really well in the early parts of their career are those who have had really good internships. And I think that um, if we can make, you know, some small changes to education, um, then, you know, it won't just be a major driver for them, but all of mankind. So I just want to say, we can't predict the future, but here's to help shape it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>